no matter what time of year you visit Washington, D.C., comfortable walking shoes are crucial. Comfortable might mean different things to different people. So know yourself and what kind of shoes you are comfortable in. According to my own Fitbit tracker, in the past 365 days, I have walked 1,727 miles. So to me, quality walking shoes are extremely important. In fact, lots of people who use Fitbit trackers or Apple watches tell me that they set their step records when they visited Washington, D.C. And if not, it's only because they recently went to Disney World and set it there. The other thing I either wear or keep with me year-round is rain protection. In the spring and fall, I pack a rain jacket in my backpack every day. And even though you don't technically wear this, I also carry an umbrella every day, 365 days per year. By the way, I've been so excited to talk about what to wear when you visit DC, I haven't even introduced myself yet. If you're new to this channel, my name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. On this channel, I share my best tips, tricks, and travel hacks for visitors who want to explore Washington DC. And I'm curious to know, are there things that you wear every time you go on a trip? Leave a comment down there so we can all learn from each other. Now, Washington DC is a city that has four seasons. And what you wear when you visit in the winter is very different than what you wear when you visit in the summer. Let's start with winter, since that's coming up. I run Trip Hacks DC tours year round, every month of the year. I do not believe it is ever too cold to do an outdoor tour in Washington DC, as long as you're prepared for it. One thing I've learned from doing this over the years is that many people focus really heavily on keeping their torso warm, but not really enough about keeping their extremities warm. But before we get to that, let's start with your coat. In the coldest months, which around here are December, January, and February, I wear a fairly inexpensive puffer coat, and it keeps me plenty warm. There are lots of different styles of coats out there, and I'm not saying that this is the best, but for me, going out and giving tours, it works just fine. If you live in a cold climate, you can bring whatever coat you like to wear back home. If you live in a warmer climate, you don't have to overdo it with your coat when you visit DC. Now, like I said, where many people go wrong is that they don't focus on their toes, fingers, and ears. And the thing is, if you mess this up, it does not matter how warm your coat is, you are going to feel cold. For a hat, you really want something that completely covers your ears, like the Trip Hacks DC hat that I wear in the winter. For your fingers, you want either mittens or gloves, something that's going to be comfortable and that you're going to actually keep on your hands. I also buy a package of Hot Hands hand warmers at the beginning of every winter. I really only use these on the coldest of the cold days, but it's better to have them and not need them than the other way around. And hot tip, sorry for the pun, is to buy these from a regular store like CVS or Walgreens because Amazon always has the prices really marked up. Now, for your toes, the key is socks. You can buy special winter thermal socks from a sporting goods store like REI, and that will definitely keep your toes warm. But if all else fails, you can always just wear multiple pairs of regular socks. Now, what about shoes and boots? This may be blasphemous to some people, but I don't even own boots. I don't particularly like boots, I don't find them comfortable, and it doesn't really snow enough in DC for them to be worth it, in my opinion. But if you like boots, and you can spare the space in your suitcase, then yeah, go ahead and bring them. Just make sure that the boots you bring will be comfortable on your feet for long periods of time. For your bottom half, jeans are usually sufficient for me. If you don't like jeans, you could try fleece pants instead. I also like long sleeve t-shirts in the winter, so that if I go into a restaurant or somewhere else indoors that's too warm to keep my coat on, I can still regulate my temperature. If you're a scarf person, scarves can be really great and potentially stylish. So go ahead and pack some of your favorite scarves. Okay, now let's switch over to talk about what to wear in the summer, which in many ways is the complete opposite. In the summer, you wanna focus on clothes that are light and loose. For me, my summer uniform is shorts and a t-shirt. It's what I wear pretty much every single day in June, July, and August. If, unlike me, you actually care about style, then any other kind of loose, light-fitting shirt will work. For women, a skirt or summer dress might be a good choice. And even though I personally don't wear it, 
Athleisure seems to have become really popular in the summer. However, with that, I will say it's generally best not to wear clothes that are tight or will stick to your body. Because in the summer, it's probably going to be hot and humid and you're going to sweat. And the tighter your clothes, the more they're going to stick to your body in an uncomfortable way. Now, when it comes to accessories, I don't leave the house without my baseball cap and sunglasses. The hat is good for keeping direct sun off of your face, and the sunglasses keeping it out of your eyes. And if you're not a baseball fan, there are plenty of other types of hats that will serve the same purpose. It's also critical to make sure you don't leave for the day without putting on sunscreen. Most visitors spend a substantial amount of time outdoors, and you don't want to burn. During summer in DC, there are also a lot of mosquitoes and other bugs. Some people swear by specific brands of bug spray. I personally think the mosquitoes around here have evolved and are no longer really repelled by bug spray. But hey, that's just a theory. One thing that is tricky about summer is that even though it's extremely hot and humid outside, many indoor sites like museums have their air conditioning cranked way up. So if you're someone who's sensitive to this sort of thing, you might wanna pack a small lightweight sweater or sweatshirt that you can put on if you go somewhere indoors that's completely frigid. Okay, now let's talk about the in-between seasons, spring and fall. The tricky thing about both of these seasons is that at any time we could always get a mini heat wave where it feels more like summer or a mini cold snap where it feels more like winter. The key to both spring and fall is layers. For my base layer, I usually start with a long sleeve t-shirt. Then for my next layer, I go with a lightweight hoodie or sweatshirt. And then on top of that, I put a light jacket. Something that happens during these seasons is that you might head out in the morning and it feels pretty chilly. But then around noon, when the sun has fully come up, it feels quite a bit warmer. So I start with all three layers when I leave home and then remove one or even two as the temperature heats up. Then if I'm still out in the evening, I may put them back on. All right, so that's the rundown of what I wear here in Washington, DC. But now I wanna hear from you. If you've been here before, leave a comment on the video and let everyone know what month you visited, what the weather was like, and whether you felt like you wore the right things or what you wish you had worn instead. And hey, if you made it this far, then I highly recommend watching another Trip Hex DC video. Enjoy your trip.